This video is sponsored by Karma, an app and a Chrome extension that ensures that you never miss a price drop or a coupon code. In my previous video, I built this massive 4x3 foot CNC machine that Avin CNC kindly sent to me. And boy, let me tell you, this thing is awesome. It has an 8.7 horsepower spindle and it just tears through material like it's nothing. But as I discovered when I cut my first project on this thing, which was a wine rack, this thing creates a ton of dust. Literally, after just one project, my entire workshop was covered. And I have a couch right next to the machine, so we definitely need to do something about the collection of that dust. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. I wanna build a dedicated dust booth and dust collection system that is gonna live on the machine, and it's gonna hook up to our big dust collection system that we have hooked up to all the other machines in our workshop. And if you haven't seen it yet, I have a big two-part series on how I built that big dust collection system, complete with dust cyclone and everything. Now, when it comes to the dust booth itself here, most of the parts are actually gonna be made on this CNC machine. But in addition to that, I also have some really cool 3D printed parts that I'm excited to show you. I also have some really cool ideas on how all this is gonna go together and how stuff is gonna work because we're not gonna build a conventional dust booth that is gonna clamp onto here. We'll get to all of that, but let's just stop building and we'll start by cutting out the parts for the entire frame. Right, so I've attached a 50 mil sheet of plywood to the machine here and we're just about ready to start cutting out our parts. It's worth mentioning that I haven't yet surfaced this MDF tabletop so it's not perfectly flat to the machine. I didn't do it in the last video because it would have just made a complete mess of my entire workshop. I mean, just imagine trying to use a car like this to surface the table without having any dust collection. So I think at the end of this video, our goal should be to be able to surface this entire thing without making a complete mess of our workshop. I'll first start by searing my tool head and then we can get to cutting. Well, yeah, I think we made a mess again, but Hopefully, this is the very last time I have to use this machine without dust collection. Right, I'll vacuum a bit, get everything nice and cleaned up. I'll remove all the screws, get the parts loosened from the tabs, and then we can finally start to assemble all this stuff. And here you can see the reason why I still need to surface the table. Most of the places it cut all the way through, but in some spots here, you can see there's a really thin layer of veneer left, which means that the MDF is slightly taller in the back than it's in the front. Oh well, not a big deal. We'll just cut this out and then clean it all up. Right, all the parts are cleaned up. It was, by the way, super easy to get rid of that tiny bit of veneer that was left just with the knife. I also used the knife to get rid of the tabs. So how is all this gonna go together? Well, since we're not gonna mount the dust shoe directly to the spindle itself, we need to mount it to something that isn't gonna move up and down with the spindle. And when looking at the spindle, all of this stuff here can move up and down, but the plate in the back here will always stay stationary. So this is what we're gonna mount all our structure to. And for that, I made these pieces. These have holes that will perfectly match up with the holes in the plate on the backside here. So we're gonna use this as the framework that we're gonna bolt all the rest of the pieces to. That way, all this is still gonna be able to move in X and Y together with the spindle, but not up and down. And this thing is what is gonna be mounted to that frame. So I've just loosely put all these pieces together to see if they fit. By the way, I'm super happy with how perfectly all this fits together, literally first try. So this thing is gonna get bolted to the frame in the back and it's going to be adjustable up and down without being influenced by the top here. So onto this thing, we're still gonna have to bolt some 3D printed parts. But first, I'm gonna screw all these pieces together so we have a nice and rigid frame to work with. Right, so this whole thing is screwed together and a bunch of the parts are glued. One of the parts I haven't glued yet is this bottom piece because there's still one thing missing from this and that is the brush that is gonna make sure that there's a good seal down towards our material, right? So this part is gonna be interesting because I haven't tried this yet. This brush that I have has a steel channel that clamps all the fibers in place and I somehow need to bend this to fit this profile. So I think this is just gonna be a whole bunch of like trial and error and hopefully I'll end up with a shape that is somewhat similar to this after. All right, that wasn't too bad. I've got all the brushes in place, added a little bit of glue, and hopefully everything should stay where it is right now. Now you might notice that compared to a lot of the other dust shoes that you find in other type of builds, these bristles are a lot shorter. And that is because these don't need to take up the slack 
from the head moving up and down. Now naturally, the rider is gonna sit in this hole here, so we need some way of getting the dust from the rider out to our big hose. And for that, I'm gonna use this 3D printed part. This thing is made to perfectly sit on top of here and then suck out the dust that is generated by the router that sits in here. And there's just something that is so satisfying about making stuff on a computer and then making them in real life. In this case, with two completely different manufacturing technologies and then having the parts come out and perfectly fit together like this. So nice. <laughs> but there is actually one issue that I forgot about when designing these. You see, I thought I'd been really clever designing this part with a bunch of really nice mounting holes for screws to screw into this frame. <laughs> Only problem is that I put all of those screws the same place where the groove for this brush is. So if I were to screw in those screws, I would end up pushing the brush back out and I don't think that would work that well. So for this one, I'll just glue it in place with some super glue. And then we can screw all the stuff together and see if it actually fits onto our machine. But first, a quick ad from today's sponsor, Karma. Karma is an app and a browser extension that makes sure you never miss a price drop or a coupon code. With Karma, you can save items from over 9,000 different stores. When you see an item that you want to save, click on the Karma button on the right side and select what price drop you would like to be notified of. You can then just get notified when one of your saved items goes on sale or when one of the sold out products finally is back in stock. You can also organize saved items into wish lists. And you can even get notified when there's a coupon code available for one of your saved products. And you can choose to get those notifications via mobile push notifications or email. And not only that, Karma automatically searches for and applies available coupon codes so that you can either save a whole bunch of money or be confident that you're getting the best price possible. This is a special feature if you use Karma on your computer, so the Chrome extension is a must. And you can earn Karma cash directly to your PayPal when shopping from select retail partners. And not only that, Karma will also donate to a charity of your choice. Check out the link in my description below to download the free Chrome extension. And to save as much money as possible, be sure to download Karma on both your phone and on your computer. <laughs> I think this might work. All right, so we need some way of keeping this in the right height. And for that, I've inserted a couple of threaded inserts into the back of these pieces. They're just the kind that you hammer into a hole from the back. And then I've also printed a couple of these knobs. These are actually the same as I have on my 3D printer camera arm here. These have a little space for where the bolt can go in, lid goes on top, and you have a little knob. And now these should hopefully go into <laughs> the inserts here. Another one on the other side. And we have an adjustable height. All right, so now with that, we can see what this thing is gonna look like. I think it's time to answer the question that I'm sure many of you have, which is why would this be better than having it mounted directly to the spindle? And in my opinion, there's a few reasons why this is better. First of all, this thing will stay at the same height, no matter how thick the material is that you're gonna cut. Meaning that these brushes can have the same height on top of the material on the first pass, as the last pass when you're cutting through material. And that just feels like it would be a better way for the dust collection. Now, secondly, and that is more of a convenience thing, all of this stuff will just stay down here. I can raise the tool head and then get great access to super quickly and easily change the cutter. But to be honest, all that stuff is just theory right now. So I think we have to test it out and see if it all works. And that leads me to the very last part that we need to install on this thing, which is probably my favorite part of the entire system. So right now, all the dust is generated here and sucked out here. But there's nothing, apart from the airflow, stopping from all the dust just spewing out the top here. And that's why I've designed this thing. This is gonna live right here and make sure that none of the dust can escape up through here. And the way it's doing that is that this thing is actually squishy. Now this thing is printed in TPU, which is a flexible filament. And this was a pretty interesting design exercise to try and design something that would be springy, easily compressible, but still return to its final shape. And yes, I did have a few goes at this. I will say one thing though, the thing that made the biggest difference between a great print and a really bad print was to have super dry filament. My first try looked like this with a bunch of holes and a terrible texture. I then put the filament in an oven at 50 degrees Celsius for about six hours. Try it again, same setting, same everything, turn out Perfect. And I'll attach this thing with a couple of nuts and bolts through these holes. There's so much space here, so this is super easy. And then a couple of wood screws, because luckily these screws are slightly further out, so they won't hit that stupid middle rail under here. All right, finally on. 
The last part of this assembly here is something that will make a good seal between this bellow and this thing. And for that, I printed this ring that has the same 45 degree angle as the top of the bellow. So this thing will just slide on top of here, clamp on, and then hopefully... <laughs> so before I connect all this stuff to the actual dust extraction, I want to see if everything actually works and nothing comes crashing into each other once I turn it on. Now the question is if I can lower it a bit without anything crashing. Cool! And yeah, as long as I don't tighten the knobs too tight, I think... Yeah, it will just be able to push it down. Oh, I just want to jump in real quick before we start on all of that. I just discovered that there was a little bit of a collision happening in the back here that kept the tool from going all the way down. I just disassembled it real quick cut off a little bit on the bandsaw, reassembled it, and now everything is looking great. So next step, dust collection hose piping thingy. All right, so you guys might remember from the last video where I'd already started on a part of this dust collection system. What I got so far is that this pipe is currently hooked up to our big dust extraction system on the other side of that wall. Since last time, I've extended this pipe a little bit and I've also made a brace here so that this pipe will be able to take the strain from the big hose hanging down from it. Next step is gonna be this 90 degree thing, which I'll actually install on a slight angle. That is so it doesn't interfere with the machine. I'm sure that will make more sense in just a second. That is on. It's actually time for yet another 3D printed part. This one is going to be the adapter that goes from this 160 millimeter tube down to 127 millimeters, which is the equivalent of about a five inch hose that we're going to have hanging out here. By the way, I just want to give a quick thanks to Ed North for sending me a bunch of their filaments to use in my projects. All of these pieces are printed in their XPLA, which is an extra strong PLA, which is perfect for a project like this. They've also been kind enough to give you guys 15% off if you use the coupon code ALCH. And you can check that out in the link in the description below. All right, and now it's time to figure out how long this thing needs to be. So it needs to be able to go from here, and then the point furthest away is all the way over there. Here goes nothing. Right, so the top here is just gonna act as sort of a strain relief making sure that we're not pulling with all the force down here, but it's taken up up here. And now here you can see the reason why I angled that top piece. That is just so that there's still some flex here and the hose doesn't get pinched. All right, we're ready for the first test. I've installed a two inch surface gibbet in here. So I'm really excited to see if this workshop is gonna get filled with dust. All right, let's go. After a little bit of back and forth, I'm finally at the point where I'm really happy with the surfacing of the table. The first time I did it, it worked great. There was only one issue, and that was that I hadn't really planned ahead. So when I made this massive table, I thought it would be a good idea to make it bigger than the work area. Only problem with that is that I could never surface the whole work area, which means that I could never have a piece of wood that's larger than the work area. Because if I wanted to stick out the back, there would be a lip that it would butt up against. So I had to take the whole thing back off, unscrew all the screws, flipped it around, cut off that bit in the back with my track saw, screwed it back on and resurfaced the whole table. And that's where we're at right now. Essentially, this table is done. The dust extraction works really well. I'm super happy with it. There's just one more thing I wanna do to the table to make it a little bit more user-friendly. So what I wanna do is to create a positive stop where I have the corner of zero, zero. So that if I wanna cut a piece of wood, I can just put it up against zero, zero, and I know it will be square, and I know where zero is already. I'm gonna do that by screwing two strips of wood up against this edge here. This doesn't need to be super precise right now because I'll then come back with a cutting bit and cut what is essentially the inside of my work area. The reason why I can do this is that I've surfaced this table with my two inch cutter and I ran that cutter on the line of zero, zero. So there's a one inch gap on the outside here that I would never be able to reach with a smaller cutter. That's also why I'm comfortable having all these screws there because with a normal six millimeter cutter, I'll never be able to hit them. And just like that, I have a fully functional CNC machine with really well functioning dust collection, a perfectly flat bed with registration marks so that I can now super quickly and easily just throw on a full sheet of plywood, 
full width sheet of plywood and I can just butt it up against these two sides and I'll always know that this is zero zero. I really like doing it this way because this will allow me to sort of maximize the work area that I have to work with and it makes it really easy to attach the material square to the table. All right, so in case you guys want to build one of these for yourself, I'll have all the files available on my website, which is alch.shop. I'll make sure to spend a little bit of time working out all the small issues that I had with this build. I'll also make sure to have the files available for both 15 mil, which is what I used, and 5 8 inch in case you have to deal with the imperial system. And all the downloads will of course include all the files for the 3D printed parts as well. So that's alch.shop. But you know what? This build is done. I'm super happy with the way it turned out. Hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, give the video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe because in my next video, I'll be actually building something with this machine that is not for the machine. <laughs> and as for how, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.